All right, so so today I'm in, right after this class, I'm in a meeting until 12.30, so if you need to come by, I'll be in my office after 12.30 tomorrow, and Wednesday I should be in my office pretty much the whole day after this period. Before school, I should be over in the, the math office over here, so two different places. Thursday we will have a quiz, and I would be out of the office from noon on. Uh, Got to go to another school. And then Friday, sleep in. You guys don't have school that day, so rock and roll kind of day. Huh? It's a teacher in service. Right? Did I get Did that work out right? Because it's the 25th. Yep. So, those of you who didn't know you didn't have school on Friday, well, happy Monday to you. I'm so happy now. The day is made. Day should be made. I like it. All right, um, if you missed last time, don't throw scissors, please. If you missed last time, you missed a pop quiz. Pop quizzes for me are basically a class to do it. If you're here, you get the full points for it. If you're not here, I don't put any points in for you, so it doesn't hurt your grade at all. But I will tell you, those who are here, it helped all their grade. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. I don't worry. I, I'll remind you tomorrow, the day after, the day after. All right. Uh, let's see what we got. Let's clear some ink. You guys ready to do some notes? Wait. So did you move the quiz to Thursday? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Is that all right? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Hope, none, hope none of you is cry yourselves to sleep by that. All right. So here we go. Let's. Let's start out with a little uh, warm up. Yeah, what? Warm up activity. Let's zoom in on that number one so we can see a little better. <laughs> Problem number one. Uh, we have x to the second. We have y to the negative third, z to the zero. x to the second, y to the fifth, z to the zero. Z to the negative eight, maybe. Looks like three. Okay, we'll go with three. Remind me when we get there. All right. Casey, what's z to the zero? Okay, so this right here is just one. Does it make the whole thing one though? No, no just make this part right here, that becomes a one. Um, help me out. Uh, Garvey, when we have negative exponents, what does that mean? What, what, does, that, what does that want to do? Uh, okay, so is it just when you move from bottom to top it changes to positive, or could it be a negative on top that moves down and turns positive? Works both ways, yeah. So uh, this particular problem, we're going to get two of the uh, letters that the exponents are negative. One's on top, one's on bottom. So they're going to flip-flop their positions. And then uh, once everything is flip-flopped, then you still have things on top and bottom. We do the tug-of-war uh, with them, which is just basically subtracting the exponents. So escape. All right, so this one, uh, I have x squared. I'm going to leave alone for right now. z to the 0, I'm going to make that 1. Uh, z to the negative 3 is going to move up here. And I have x squared. That's still the same. y to the fifth, that's still the same. And then y to the negative 3 is now down here. So please note we had this one that moved as well as this one moved. And where did this one come from? It came from z to the what? Z to the 0 is the same thing as 1. So it looks like the x's, we can do a tug of war. We have 2 on top. We have 2 on bottom. We have a tie. We have a tie. What happens? They cancel each other out. So they're gone. We don't have to worry about them anymore. Um, I have z to the third on top, no z on bottom, so I just can stay with z to the third, or one times z to the third, same thing. And then how many y's do I have on bottom? Eight. Eight. Why am I not doing a tug of war with the y's? Because they're on the same level. They're, yeah, they're on the same level, both on the bottom. Good. So y be eight. Okay, so that's what that problem would simplify to. I think that would be a very fair type of problem to give you on the quiz. Okay. Can I erase that? Yeah. All right. Let's do. OK. 
Okay, uh, problem number two. Let's zoom in on that a little bit so we can get a little bit better look at it. Um, I think at this point it's okay to leave the negative exponents because I think with the exponent outside, we distribute that in. It's a multiplication, a power of power. Remember when exponents on, are on top of each other, then you have to multiply them. Okay, so in problem number two, I'm going to distribute that 2n to all three of those terms. So the 2, the a to the negative 2, the b to the third. And then what do I do with the 3? What do I do with this 3 right here? Distribute it into this portion, okay? All right, let's see if we can walk through this. Escape. All right. So, Kenzie, solve for me this if I do that and that and that. Uh huh. Squint. Okay. Good. B to the six. Good. All right. So you said it's two squared, so that's four. A to the negative two to the second becomes a to the negative four, and then b to the sixth. That's a b. I'm trying to do at least. Okay. Does that make sense, Mr. Kruger? What should I do with that uh, other one? Talk me through that one, and you can leave you can leave me the negative exponents on it. That one. Go ahead. To the almost. What is three times negative one? Yes, okay. What is A going to be raised to? Three. A to the third. What is B going to be raised to? Good, B to the 12. Excellent. Okay, so let's escape out of that. So I'm going to get uh, 3 to the negative 3. Whoa, that's kind of weird. Uh, oh, we have that fancy. Yeah, let's just let's erase that real quick. Go back to normal. Okay, so 3 to the negative 3, a to the 3rd, b to the 12th. I like it so far. Okay, I do have some negative exponents. So, let's see. Ben, what should I do with, with what's a negative exponent you see right away? Where should that go? It becomes a denominator. There's not a denominator, it's going to become one. What else is a negative exponent? 3 to the negative. 3 to the negative 3. So this and this are both going to move. Okay, so on top I'm going to get 4. I have b to the 6th. I have a to the 3rd. I have b to the 12th. And we're going to put that all over 3 to the 3rd. a to the 3rd. 4th, uh, excuse me. All right. 3 to the 3rd is 3 times 3 <coughs> times 3. 3 times 3 would be 9. 9 times 3 would be 27. Good. All right, so I think I can start combining things. So I'm going to get 4 over 27. That will not reduce because 4 doesn't go into 27. There's no numbers that do. Uh, how many Bs do I got on top? 18. Why 18? Yeah, I have this one and this one, so I have B to the 18. Uh, A's are going to tug up war. I have three on top and I have four on bottom. Who wins? One. Bottom by how many? One. one. A and H to the first, is that the same? Yes. Yep. So there's that answer. <coughs> God bless you. Okay, I think we're... What happened? Yo. Oh, because we had 3 to the third power, and that's 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and then 9 times 3 is 27. Is that all right? Yeah. Oh, it was A to the first. We did tug of war, and A to the first and A is the exact same thing. It's your choice if you want to leave it here. It's totally fine, but it's not always required.
And I, I'm not going to mark you wrong if you click that button. Yeah? Uh, okay, so because this whole quantity here was squared, this 2 came here, so that was 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, and then a to the negative 2 times that is a to the negative 4. Because I multiply power to exponents on top of each other, multiply. Can I erase that one? Okay, so some of this should be review because that's kind of where we're at with this. Uh, let me erase. All right, back there. All right. So problem number three, we got in a scientific notation. So I have three times ten to the fifth. And then I have 2 times 10 to the negative 2. So let's treat them as two different things. So I'm going to break that fraction into two fractions. I have 3 over 2 as one of them, and 10 to the fifth over 10 to the negative 2 as the other. Okay? So let's see if we can figure this one out. So I have 3 over 2, and then I have 10 to the fifth over 10 to the negative 2. 3 over 2 reduces to what decimal? What decimal? 1 and a half, which is 1.5. 1. 1. So this becomes 1.5. Scientific notation, you have a number, then a decimal, and then up to three digits behind it. That'll work. Um, I do have a negative exponent. What do you think should that happen to that negative 2? What happens here? It's going to move up. So that becomes 10 to the fifth times 10 to the second. Like bases, when multiplied, what do I do to the exponents? Add them. So 1.5 times 10 to the seventh. Okay, I have a number, a decimal, followed by one, two, or three digits. This works. I like it. Any questions there? So again, scientific notation, you want to convert a fraction into a decimal. Yeah? Is standard notation when you write out all the digits in scientific years to seven? Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, so if you were to write that out, you would move the decimal to the right five spots. So it would be one, five, oh, 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 oh. I think I did that right. Yeah. Okay, can I erase? Um, problem number four, I have 8 times 10 to the second, 2 times 10 to the negative 8. Ooh, okay, so I can multiply, <laughs> whoop, 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 time out, give me that. 8 times 2 is 16. I know that 16 has got to turn into 1.6, so basically the decimal is moving that way. Okay, so that's eventually what we're going to get. Um, like bases, yes, it is a negative exponent, so technically it could move down. But like bases, we're going to add the exponent. So 2 added to negative 8 is how much? Negative 6. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, so let's make this work in our head. This would mean that right now how this is written, which is incorrect, but right now there's a decimal sitting right there. Do you agree with that? That negative exponent means it's going to move to the left or to the right if I get it in standard form. Good. To the left. So basically, that would mean this would go, I'm going to put a few zeros here. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 6 would be that written out. So then, what is this going to be if we write it appropriately? Negative 5 is correct. Let's see if we can make that work in our heads. Okay? Why does the negative 5 work? Well, this one, this said, hey, move it this way, six spots. Got it? So if I've already moved it one spot, how many more spots are remaining to move it? Five. So down below, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5 is the correct 
problem there. And again, that's tougher. Sometimes it's better if you write it out a little bit so you can make the justification work in your head. Okay? Scientific notation is not something that you work in all the time. So it, it looks a little different sometimes. Can I clear that off? All right, problem number five. I have 5 times 10 to the third in parentheses squared. What happens to the squared on the outside? Angelo. What happens to that 2 on the outside of number 5? What happens right there? What does that do? Good. It distributes. Okay? Distributes to here and to here. So I get 5 squared times 10 to the 6. 5 squared is what? 25 times 10 to the 6. So if I were to write that one out, where's the decimal sitting on this problem right now? Yeah, it's right here. Okay, what does this mean? So I'm going to add how many sixes? How many zeros? How many zeros? Yes, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So this means the same thing as this. But I want this to be right here. Okay, so I want 2.5 times 10 to the 7th. Good, because think about it. If I were to put the decimal here, I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 to get the same number. And again, these are strange to think about. They're not your normal, everyday, you know, we're not counting a scientific notation. Okay. Again, scientific notation is to be used when you're talking about really, really large numbers and really, really small numbers, meaning a really small decimal. It's often used in the science community. Um, do any of you know why uh, science, they use significant digits? I know. It's a tough one. And I actually didn't, I never did this in high school. Go ahead. That's to do with the triple mean balances that they use. Okay? If, in order for you to measure the mass of something, if you had a triple mean balance, that's why you're taking it out to significant digits. Okay? It also has to do with when you're, when you're like, if you had this much of this stuff and you're like, oh, okay, there's uh, 3.25 milliliters of this. And if you were to say, oh, okay, well, if I multiply that by 0.6742, that's kind of goofy. So six, six figs has to do in the science community with really just how you measure stuff with their apparatuses. All right. Can I go to the next slide? All right. Working with linear expressions, this goes along with 18, classifying and adding slash subtracting polynomials. Uh, learning target, I can classify polynomials based on degree, number of terms. I can also add and subtract polynomials, leaving the answer to standard form. Okay, so a few things to know. Standard form is you go from highest exponent to the constant. To the constant. What is a constant? Yeah. No? Say it. Say it. What would stay the same in math? You're right. What would stay the same? What do we pervert things with in math? The letter with it. If you don't have a letter with it, it has to be a. So like the number three is a constant, okay? Like if you saw, hey, I have three. What does that mean? I have three. There's not a variable attached to it. So a constant is just a number. 
And then highest exponent to the constant. So you're going to be writing things that are like, oh, 3x to the fifth plus 2x to the fourth minus 3x to the third plus 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. The 6 is the constant. Okay, It's not changing at all. So standard form is going highest exponent to lowest exponent. Okay, And we're going to add and subtract polynomials. So I want you to think about a few things. Okay. Polynomials are all around you. You all listen to music, right? Those musical notes that you're hearing is actually some sort of wave function, which is some sort of polynomial. Okay? Any of you play piano? Or any other instrument? You play the voice? Is there a way that you could play a certain chord that your ears are going, ooh, that doesn't sound good. Is it still a chord, though, even though it doesn't sound good? Yeah. Now, a lot of times, you can listen to a song, and you can hear if the wrong chord was played. Why is that? Well, your ears are tuned to a certain, I know what this song is supposed to sound like. Ooh, that was wrong. Or when someone's singing out a key, go to church. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, you know, church is dealing with, like, four notes only, and there's still people that are like, oh, I'm going to sing this way, and you're like, ooh, man. You're, you're... Well, it doesn't matter if your octave's too low or too high, because it, as long as you're in the right note, you're fine. It's when you get the guy that's, or the gal that's way off base. That happens. Go to a concert, same thing. Okay, people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You start singing the lyrics, and they're like, and then they're trying to explain to their friends, no, I thought it was this song. No, you're wrong. No, I heard it this way one time. You're like, no, you didn't. One time. Yeah, one time. You know, it's like the example. I have an uncle that <coughs> got ran over by a train three different times, and he's still here. So trains don't kill you. What? You guys all have, you guys, you guys have all heard the stories. I have a friend that, I have an uncle that, I have a second cousin that. I know a guy who knew it. Guy. Yep. It's like, we're, you know, we're not Kevin Bacon. We're not worried about the seven degrees of separation. You know, it's like, as soon as you hear someone say, yeah, I know a guy that, you kind of know that this, this story is going to, you know, be a bent truth. Agree? Because all of a sudden, you become a person that retells that story. My best friend knows a guy that. Now your friends have heard it. Well, my friend whose best friend knows a guy that. What the heck's going on with society? All right, so classify and add subtract polynomials. Okay? Pretty easy gig. Things that you have to understand is letters that have the same exponents are like terms. Letters that have different exponents are not like terms. So if I add x to the fifth and 7x to the fifth, those are like terms because it's both x to the fifth, even though one of them has a base of a number different than 1. Okay? Can I move off this slide? Okay, so expression, okay, polynomial, expression that is the sum of terms. Okay, so if I had something like this, 3x to the 4th plus 2x plus 5. How you doing, Cupcake? Doing well. All right. Does he need to go with you guys now? Oh, yeah. okay. No, good, good for you. Perfect. He's good. There you go. All right, so 3x to the fourth plus 2x plus 5. Item 1, is this in descending order with exponents? Do we have a couple gaps? We, we do, and that's okay. It could not happen that way. But then if I were to add this to, you know, 4x to the fifth plus 3x minus 7. I'm going to cross out non examples right now because we're not working with that. <laughs> So, like terms. Did someone fall? Yeah. Okay. So, a couple things. You look at these. Is there anything out front that I need to distribute over other than 1? No. So, that means that I can just drop the parentheses without any problems. Is there anything that I could distribute over the parentheses here other than 1? 
Nope. Again, we're going to do that. Okay, so this is an example of a polynomial. So now I want to put it in descending order according to the exponents. So what is my largest exponent up here, Reese? Seven is a constant. I'm looking at exponents. Oh, would it be five? Five. So this is my largest exponent. I'm going to put this first. Reese, what's my next lowest exponent? Four. Okay, so I'm going to put this next. Hey, why was it plus here? Yeah, that's a positive. That's why that is a plus there. Okay, um, Reese, do you think I have any like terms up here? Remember, a like term, same letter, same exponent. Is it like the 3 and the x? 3 and the x are perfect. The 3 and the x and the 2 and the x. If I combine those together, how many of them do I have? 5. x, good. My constant is 5, and my constant is negative 7. If I combine 5 and negative 7, what do I get? Almost. Oh, no. Nope. How much? Negative two. So I have five bucks in my pocket, something costs seven dollars, so I owe two bucks. So this is now in standard form. Okay? This is an example of a good polynomial. It goes from highest exponent to lowest exponent, and no change. Biggest to the squatters, yeah. So let's. Yes. All right. So that is an example. A non example of a polynomial would be something like this. need to giggle it outside the door, please do it. Okay, so this is not an example. What's different about this one? Yeah, dividing, you know, you don't really have like terms if you're dividing with a letter on bottom. You can have a constant on bottom, which is a number, and that still could be a polynomial, but being that I have letters on the bottom, this is going to indicate this is not going to work for a polynomial. Okay? So the degree of an exponent for the term. Okay, so if I had so this is a polynomial, it's in descending order, it goes from the highest exponent to the lowest exponent. What degree exponent would you feel this would be? What degree? What's the highest degree? Five. So this is a fifth degree polynomial. Fifth degree polynomial. You look to your highest exponent once you've written it in descending order, and you name it. This is a fifth degree polynomial. Okay? We're going to get to some terminology. There's some special ones that we can name, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But as far as naming a polynomial, let's say, hey, what degree is this polynomial? Make sure it's in descending order first. Look to see what your highest exponent is. Highest exponent is going to tell you what the degree is. So this matches this. Okay? Polynomial just means you have some descending terms. May I move on? Okay, standard form exponents in decreasing, decreasing order. Okay, again, highest exponent goes to lowest exponent. A non-example would be this. That's not in decreasing order. So that's an example of you not being in decreasing order. If I wanted to change this, to change it into decreasing order, I would have this. Do 
Name for me this polynomial. What degree polynomial is this? It's a fourth degree polynomial. So write it in descending order, 4, 3, 2, or 4, 3, 1, none. Okay, and then your highest exponent is your name digit. <coughs> okay. If I have a constant, if I had, say, the number 6, there's not an x with it. So in order to make a problem not 0, x has to be raised to what power? x to the 6 is x to the 6. What power? So what would my letter have to be here? If I had an x, if I wrote 6, 6 is not the same thing as 6x, unless x is raised to what exponent? 0. Okay? So x to the 0 is the same thing as 1, 6 times 1. So some examples of this would be 3x to the 0. 7, 12, negative 3. Those are all examples of constants. Okay? You either have a zero exponent or you don't have any letters that are with numbers. Okay? Linear, the highest exponent is to the first. The highest exponent is to the first. Linear would be like this, 3x plus 1, or 7x, or negative 3x plus 2. Those are all examples of linear. Linear, if you were to graph them, would form a straight line. Quadratic is a second degree. Okay, examples of quadratic would be 2x squared plus 5x minus 2, uh, x squared minus 6, things like that. You have uh, something raised to the second power. So the second power would be to graph it. It looks like a parabola. Parabola can open up or down. We won't see math in high school where they open to the right or to the left, but they could at technically. Okay? Cubic, what do you think it's going to be? Three raised to the three. Okay? So a cubic would be like 5x to the third plus 2x squared plus 5x minus zero. Okay? A cubic polynomial is raised to the third power. Cubic means it's in the third dimension. And then you have something called a quartic. Want to take a shot at that one? Quartic is to the fourth power. So it's some number to the fourth power plus a bunch of whatever. Okay? Quartic is in the fourth power. <coughs> so we're talking about degrees right now. A degree is either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It can be whatever, though. Can I go off the cuff for a minute? Can I, go, can I take you into the world of being dimensions? Is that all right? So zero dimensions is basically a point in space. It's infinitely small. It doesn't really, it's just a location. Like there's a point right there. Okay? You can't really see it, but there's a point there, and there's a point right there, and there's one there, there, and there, and there. And they're all around us. Okay? So the zero dimension is just a location. We have nothing more than a location. It's a point. Okay? A point exists where two lines cross each other. That's what comes in geometry later. Um, but just a few things to note about all of that. Okay? Close that down, and I don't want that open. Okay. So, point in space. Zero D. That's a constant. So it's a number. Six! Or six. Right there. Good. 1D. You have at least two points, and you have some line. A line you can go left, right on, up or down, front or back. That's one dimension. So this is a linear term. Okay? 2D. This is quadratic. It's a little booming. Bowling up 
upstairs. Or okay, quadratic. Quadratic, you need at least three points that aren't linear in order to take place. A quadratic is like the second dimension. You go right, left, up, and down. Okay? Quadratic could also be a square or a rectangle or a triangle or a circle. 3D. This is a what? What do we call it? Nope. Triangle. Okay? A trinomial is third dimension. Okay? It's an object. That jug of water right there. Your water bottle. Your textbook. Your pencil. Okay? Those are 3D objects. Okay? 3D, if you were to, I'm pretty sure most of you have drawn this at some point in your life. You've drawn a box. Right? Now, is that box a three-dimensional object? <laughs> Yes. Oh, oh, say it. It's on two-day paper. So is it 3D? No. It's a two-dimensional object, which is trying to show you a shadow of what the third dimension looks like. Well, we're going to get heavy here in a second. You guys with me? So, heavy. So this right here is the shadow. If I had a true box, if I had straws that made a 3D box, and I held up that box in front of this, it would portray this kind of picture. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, now, I'm not, I'm not the best artist. I'm just saying that's what it would look like. Okay, 40. What is it? Is that what I called it? No, what I call it? Quartic. Quartic. Okay, you guys ready? This is 4D. You guys with me? You guys ready? Now, I'm not going to draw you a 4D object. This is what I'm going to draw you. I'm going to draw you what the shadow of the third dimensional object of the fourth dimensional object would have looked like. Say what? All right, ready? Watch. Follow me. So we're gonna draw this. Still with me? Yes. Anyone not with me? So that's a two-dimensional object trying to represent a three-dimensional object, basically the shadow. Still with me? Yes. Let me draw another one. Again, that is a two-dimensional object representing a three-dimensional object shadow. Still with me? Uh-oh. Here we go. We're gonna start bending brains a little bit. I'm gonna connect. All the appropriate vertices. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh wait. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Let's try and make this work. If we had a fourth dimensional object that cast a shadow into three space, three space is where we're happy. We live in three space. Okay. Yes, I understand you can say time is a dimension. Definition of dimension is something that you can go forward and backward in. We cannot go backward in time. So right now, time is only a half dimension because theoretically you can only go forward into it. Unless we accelerate faster than the speed of light, light then what's going to happen is our mass is going to become infinite, and that can't exist. Uh, <laughs> say what? It's, a, it's pretty simple. It goes with the equals mc squared. That's how it works. Um, so anyhow, this is what the shadow of the third dimensional object would look like if it was cast, a shadow was cast from the fourth dimension to this. What does this object look like in 4D? I don't know. I know that the shadow, I could easily make the shadow, I could take a box in a box, connect all the appropriate vertices, go, look, I've got a box connected. Right? So are we like not able to like know what the fourth dimension, the third dimension would look like? I, I can't fathom it. I could tell you, if I wanted to do fifth dimension, I'm going to take this exact shape and attach all the appropriate vertices. Now, I don't have to have the appropriate vertices necessarily connected. I didn't have to have them here either. 
So you're like, dude, you just. What's that uh, shape called? I made it for Hypercube. Wow. Woo. If you look it up, there's a lot of cool photos. Oh, yeah. I mean, so when I was finishing my degree in math, I was asked to continue with my degree in math and get a PhD in chaos theory, which deals with this. And I was already going, oh, my gosh. I, I'm driving home, and I'm thinking of things in weird ways now because of just regular. I couldn't imagine getting my PhD in this kind of stuff. All right. Monomial means mono means one. Binomial means two. Trinomial means three. Okay, a monomial could be a number. A monomial could be like this. A monomial could be like this. It's a single term. A binomial means we have two terms, x plus 2, 3x to the fourth plus 5. Those are binomials. A trinomial, you have something like that. The leading coefficient is, you look to the highest exponent, And your leading coefficient is whatever the number is right here. Okay? So you write it in standard form. Highest exponent to lowest exponent. What's the leading coefficient? Whatever the base number is to the highest exponent. Okay? So the highest exponent here would be x to the first, so that would be a 1. Highest exponent here is a 4. Leading coefficient is 3. Highest exponent here is 2. Leading coefficient is a 1. Okay? Highest exponent here is to the fourth. Leading coefficient is? Six. All right. 7x to the fourth. Or, seven, or excuse me. 7x plus 4. What degree? What degree here? One. What degree here? What degree here? What degree here? Four. What degree here? Uh-uh. Four. Zero. Zero. Good. What degree here? Uh, three. three. Now those of you who are sitting there going, where does the zero come from? X to the zero power is equal to what? X to the zero power is equal to what? One. So this five and five X to the zero power means the same thing. Because X to the zero is one, so that means five times one. Uh, name using degree. This is a what? What degree? What degree? First degree. How many terms? Two. Which means? Two. By? Binomial. <coughs> binomial. So this is a first degree binomial. Okay, number of terms, two. Okay, so we, we already did it. So first degree binomial, this is the same answer as here. Leading coefficient of this one? Seven. All right, let's see if we can get the next one right. Name using a degree, second degree. Okay, number of terms. Three. Three, good. I have one, I have two, I have three. It is a second degree trinomial. Okay, leading coefficient. Three. Three. Just worry about the number. Don't worry about having the letter with it. Okay. That uh, is a it's third degree. Number of terms? One. One is known as monomial. So this is a third degree monomial. Monomial. What's my leading coefficient? Four. Four. All right. Uh, what's the degree? Two. Name your degree. Four. Fourth Four. degree. Number of terms? Two. 
It is a fourth degree what? Binomial. What is my leading coefficient? Nine. Nine. What's the degree? <coughs> so it's a zero degree. Number of terms? A zero degree. Which we're going to call constant. What's my leading coefficient? Five. Okay, read whatever the base of the exponent is. Uh, this last one is third degree. Okay, how many terms? Three. It is a third degree. Third degree trinomial. Okay, what is my leading coefficient? It's a trick. Two. Wait, wait. Almost. Five. No. Seven. I like the two. Oh, 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 <coughs> Worksheet number 19. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do it. Do your best attempt at it. Don't bring it in blank. Oh, I didn't get any of this. Because I believe you got quite a bit of it. I bet you did.